And here we go. Um, let me just share my screen again. Um, and then this is what we're going to do. So those of you who are wondering where is Michal, Michal's not here today. I'm going to be alone, um, which is fine. We miss her. I miss her. And I'm sure you guys do too, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll survive. We'll, go, we'll get through this, okay? All right. So this is the, today's class. What we're going to be discussing is when did Israel begin? Which is like a pretty simple question. Like when did this country begin? But there's difficulty with this question is that there could be a lot of different answers. Um, if you see just on this, this slide, um, we could really put together different times when Israel may have been considered, like when it started, when it became a country or a place for the Jewish people. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to input a, uh, a link for, the, for a lino board, um, which I'd like everyone to do, please. And basically, I'm going to input the link right here right there, and there you're gonna see um, a bunch of different times when Israel could have been considered, uh, or when did Israel start, or when did Israel start as a place for the Jewish people. So go to this Lionel board. Um, you may have seen some of these quotes before. Go to Lionel board, board, um, answer the question. I'm gonna be on it just so I could make sure everyone is not posting on top of each other and making sure everyone has their names. And uh, it will ask, there's a number of, you'll see here, different quotes and different um, questions, and you can watch the video. Let's take around five, six minutes to do this. So let's say it's 4.08 right now. Let's take till around 4.13, 4.14, okay? If you have any questions, you could just uh, do it in the chat box.
Bless you. Thank you very much. Okay, just let's let's leave another minute or two. Okay, let's take one more, one more minute, one more minute. Okay, all right, thank you all for a lot of your great responses. Um, there's a lot of good things on here that I'm, that I'm reading and it really looks like that you guys read a lot of the different, uh, it was a big lino, a lot of information, so I really appreciate all of you reading all the information. Um, why don't we try first to have some volunteers, um, um, you know, maybe responding to the questions. The question, as a, as a reminder was, when did Israel begin? When did Israel begin? So who wants to uh, um, either read or summarize what they wrote and explain why? Uh, Jacob, why don't, why don't you try going first? Um, I said that it's when, wait, hold on. I said that it's when Jacob got his name changed to Israel because that was like the first time it was heard. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, Adina. It wouldn't let me type, but um, I would say when, when God created the world because he knew what he was going to do with it. So. All right. Really interesting. Really interesting. Um, let's ha hear from Danny Kroner. Um. I think it was when Israel became a state in 1948 because that's when it was officially on the map before technically it wasn't a country. Okay, cool. Um, anyone else would like to? We got a bunch of, all right, Nicole, please. Um, I'd say it's when like Israel like purchased the land because like that's like we got the land and stuff and that's like, yeah. We thought it was gonna be the land. Us. Great, great. That's really great. And I really, it also really connects to, I don't know if you remember what we did, what we did either as last class or the class before, but when we talked about, you know, how to claim something, like, how do you know that something is yours? And uh, we talked about, you know, purchasing something. So buying, buying the land is like a really important topic. So that's, that's really good. Um, anyone else would like to, to share their response? We had a lot, we had a lot of great ones. Okay. Um, all right. So, so again, so what we what we really see from th this lino board, and one of the things which is is really important um, when we're talking is is the question of when did Israel begin, and depending on who you ask. And who you speak to, you know, they're going to have different responses. So one person said, right when God created the world, because he knew, or God knew, not he knew, God knew that, there, you know, that Israel was going to be for the Jewish people. And other people said, no, you know, when they purchased the land and all these things. So it's really important to think 
why that, why that can be something that's difficult uh, when it comes to modern day times, because you have a lot of different people who believe that Israel became their country, a Jewish country, at different times. And that has different meanings to different people. Um, so I'm really happy that you guys did that, did that really well. Um, I want to share now with you something which we were going to do last class, um, but we, we, didn't get to, we didn't get to it, but it's still something that's really important. What we're going to do, it's a, bit of a, it's a bit of a long video clip, um, and it's about when, just as, uh, just as uh, to, to prepare you, is when the UN voted. So someone, you guys, there's information on the line about when Israel became a modern state in 1948. That's when Israel became the modern state of Israel, okay? And so that didn't just happen out of nowhere, right? So this was voted in the UN. So what I'd like you to do is uh, I'm going to post the link here of the video. It's, it's a bit long. It's around six minutes. Um, it should start at around 347, the video. So make sure, so I'll just put in three, four, something like that. If it starts earlier, then please forward that to the, because it's a, it's, it's a long clip, so we don't want you to so watch this video. And I'm going to type in some questions into the chat, which I'd like you to think about while watching. So again, this is the YouTube video, and I'm going to type in some, uh, some of the questions which I want you to think about and write your responses to in this chat box um, while uh, watching the video. Okay, so we'll give you, it's a, you know, uh, I guess like six minutes, six, seven minutes to do this. Okay. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write on the chat box. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, let's take another minute and let's uh, love to see people starting to respond. Okay, I'd love to see people writing. We have a bunch of people. This is great answering the first question. Um, those, of, if anybody wants to talk over chat, I mean over the microphone, please feel free to do so. Anyone would like to? All you have to do is uh, unmute yourself and start speaking. Can I answer question one? Please. Um, well, it kind of just, kind of made us feel proud because yeah. that was when we like joined, so, like and not like joined, but like got to Israel and like became in our own like, country and state, so that we could like be free from everyone else. Okay, great, great. And it seems like a lot of people felt that way. Um, those of you who are writing, um, right? Very well like what Brooke wrote and Sierra, a lot of people have been writing. It's something happy. Danny added, you know, they're striving to get something for 2,000 years. You know, they weren't, okay, the Jewish people didn't have a country for, for thousands of years. So that was an amazing thing. Um, anyone want to talk about the sec second question? Did you think, did you expect the Well, you knew what happened in the end, but like, let's see if you were in that moment, would you have expected that the vote to go through? Now, question number two. Anyone have any? Typing in question two again so people can see it. I think that uh, there was just a lot of controversy around the whole thing, so I think that uh, everyone probably thinks that the votes would be like split, and uh, probably it wouldn't be unanimous. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Um, Nicole. Um, I like would have thought like that. Like most people like wouldn't think that because like a lot of people were like against like the Jews, especially after World War Two and stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Great. Danny, you wanted to say something? Um, I think that um, we didn't really expect it because there's a lot going on in the, in the area and everyone seemed very, really surprised that it happened. Okay. Great. So, um, and the... The last, the last question which you talked about were, what were, what was, um, and I'll put it here again, just so people have it. 
um, which of the accounts did you find most interesting? I mean, like which part of the video did you find like as an interesting story? Oh, Jacob. Hmm? No, you, you're starting to speak. Oh, never mind. Sorry. I didn't know my mic was on. That's okay. Ben Gideon, right? Anyone else? Thank you, Danny. Oh, you could type it in the chat. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do now, um, I'd like to give you a little bit of what Israel looked like when we're talking about when did when did Israel begin. I'd like to give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a background about what Israel was like before 1948. Now I'm not going as far back as in the times like some of the quotes that you saw in the times of like the Bible or the Torah or anything like that. But but we're gonna go to I would say like last last week we talked about. Does anyone remember what the Aliyot were? Can anyone maybe remind us what the Aliyot were to Israel? It was the like the video we saw. Yeah, Jacob. Uh, Aliyah means going up. Right, it means to go up. But we so that's that's great. It means going up. To move to Israel means you you say Aliyah. Um, but does anyone remember what like what specifically the Aliyot were? You don't have to remember each one. But the general idea of what they were. Someone typed something in. Oh, Rabbi, thank you. Anyone you could type it in? The Aliyot, we watched a video about it last class. There were there were six of them. That's the hint I'll give. Okay, so we're just just to remind everyone, um, to move to Israel, you say Aliyah, and we saw that from the eight, early 1800s, there were different groups of Jewish people, mainly young people, who moved to Israel in large groups. So we saw that like at the beginning of like the 1800s, like the Jewish people made up like 2.5% of the entire population. But by the time 1948 came around, so many Jews came, that they now represented like 65% of the population. So there are many Jews moving. But I want to give you a bit of a picture, and it's not the greatest picture, about what, what Israel looked like before it became a state. Okay? So just, just as, a, just as a, like a, um, a little bit to visualize it, there were three main nationalities that were living in Israel. One were Jewish people, two were the Arabs nation, and three were the British. Does anyone know why the British were there? You could just speak on the uh, microphone. Britain owns this land. Yeah, how did they get there? They conquered it. Right. From World War I. Right, it, it, right. It, was, it was just like, you know, the United States, right? Was, was once a colony of, of England, right? So too Israel was, right? It's, people forget that, right? That, you know, you know, America went through its own revolutionary war, right? And they had like their difficulties also. When was the, revolu what, the revolutionary, when was it? Anyone can give me that information? 1776. 1776, it was like, the, you know, the settlers versus the colonizers, right? And, and, and um, that's what Israel was, right? Israel was the, under, called the British Mandate, right? The British people had the land, all right? But they're just like, just like in many other places in the world, right? Britain, the English came to a land that had what we call indigenous people, people who grew up in the land, have had a major history there. And those two people were Jewish and Arab. So now you have three groups of people in one tiny little country that all believe it's their land to some extent. There's some people who are willing to share it more than others. And there's some that are not willing to share it at all. Okay. And because of that, there was a lot, there, there was a lot of difficulty there. 
So I want to just show, so there's a lot of fighting. I just want to bring up two quick examples. I mean, if I can have someone um, read um, for, for me, any, any takers to please, uh, to please read. Um, two, I'm going to read you two accounts which happened, which may give you a bit of a picture of what Israel looked like before 1948. Any, can we get any takers? You could just read off of the uh, screen. Uh, for many years, the small Jewish community in the ancient city of Hebron lived in peace with their tens of thousands of Arab neighbors. But on the night of August, August 23rd, 1929, the tensions simmered within the cauldron of nationalities bubbled over, and for a period of, period, period of three days, Hebron turned into a, city, into a city of terror and murder as the Arab residents led a rampaging massacre against the bewildered and helpless Jewish community. Okay, so just quickly, basically, um, 1929, the Arab residents living in Hebron, which is a major city in, in Israel, um, a very political city, um, they, there was a massacre against Jewish people. And if you read the bottom, um, we'll see uh, the time massacre, 67 Jews were murdered. Homes and synagogues were destroyed. Many moved to Jerusalem. And basically, Hebron was um, left, but all the Jewish people left there. Right? This was at a time when many, many Jewish immigrants, people coming on Aliyot, came to Israel. And the Arabs were, that were living in Israel were very, were not happy about this. They wanted the British, you know, because the British were, were owned the land. They wanted them to stop immigration. And um, they didn't want to let so many people. So this, it wasn't the only reason, but it's one of the reasons why they went and did this. And this was like a really um, very intense um, massacre, obviously. And um, it had many, many, imp had a lot of impact on Jews living in Israel during that time. Okay, so this is just one, this is one of many attacks um, of, the, of Arabs living in Israel on Jewish people before 1948, basically fighting for the war. Now we're gonna look at another example on the other side, right, because we wanna show both sides. Um, can we have someone um, please volunteer to read this part? I will. Thank you. Okay. The only July 22nd, that one? Um, no, uh, where are you, on my screen? Uh, from the top, from the yellow. Uh, the King David Hotel was the site of the British Military Command and the British Criminal Investigation Division. Argon chose it as a target against British troops. Okay, so we'll just stop there for a second. Basically, as I said, the British were there policing the country, right? And their military... Um, their main military zone was in the King David Hotel, which is a magnificent and very famous hotel in Jerusalem. And the Irgun, people know, oh, Israel now has, has the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces. But before the state, they had mainly two, they had two armies um, in Israel. One was called the Haganah, which ended up that ended up turning into what's called Tzva Haganah Israel, which is the Israel Defense Force. And then you had um, the Irgun. Okay, and the Irgun um, targeted the King David Hotel. Uh, please continue and see what happened. Whoever was reading? Okay. On July 22, 1946, the calls were made to the hotel, to the hotel warming, uh, warming on, of the attack. <clears throat> As a way to avoid civilian casualties, as a result, when the bombs exploded, the casualty toll was high. A total of 91 killed and 45 injured. Among the casualties were 15 Jews. Few people in the hotel proper were injured by the blast. Okay, so here we have an example of Jews actually even killing Jews, right? And it got to a certain extent, and the, there was so much tension there were, and there, I, I could give more examples of Jews attacking Arabs and Arabs attacking the British and the British. And it was exactly like this triangle, which I showed you uh, before. This is, um, this is what was happening. Um, this is what was happening at, um, in Israel before the country, before that UN vote, which you guys saw. So what I want you to do right now um, 
And those of you who just joined, um, who are just who just joined, we haven't done this yet. Um, so it's just just another another type of tool we'll do. So we see this triangle of the British, Jewish, and Arab, and we see that this is, it's a very tense and political society that they're living in. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is you're able to privately chat with people in your group. In in this, so I I've made different groups here. Um, there's six groups all together. Um, and what you'll do is you could privately chat them on the chat group um, that's part of Zoom, right? And what I'd like, and I'm going to put the question which I'd like you to chat about here, which is you guys saw the video of Israel becoming a Jewish state. So knowing what I just told you before about British, um, Arabs, and Jewish, what impact do you think Jews, um, Israel becoming a Jewish state has on the current society living in Israel at that time. So a lot of you wrote, you were very happy that Israel became a state, right? The Jewish people were longing for it. They waited 2000 years, but knowing that there were British, the British ended up leaving when they gave them the state, but the British and there were Jews and there's Arabs and all these people who think they deserve the land. What do you think that impact has? So what we'll do is first you'll, um, you'll, uh, discuss it with your, the person in your group. And that way, when we come together, we have a lot more to talk about. And you guys have thought it uh, maybe a little bit more through. Um, just so that you guys know how to chat with someone, you just click on their name, like I'm doing, and you can privately chat with them. Those of you who have three people, um, I think it's still possible to do that by just um, adding another additional person. Okay, so here are the groups. And um, let's give you let's say two, let's say three minutes, three minutes to, uh, it's I think 440 right now. Let's take till 443 to discuss it. And then we'll come back as a group and talk it all together. And rem yeah, you're supposed to just text your, this is the question again that we want you to do. It's in the chat box. If anyone's not in a group, please tell me, or if they, if they don't know where their friend is or what to do, please text. We were keeping score. No. On, on a radio in, in the office. I remember a lot the colors. So Guatemala, yes. Argentina, abstention. Lebanon, no. Yugoslavia, I'm saying. What are you like saying in the question? It's kind of confusing. I'm I'm gonna explain it on the text so that way people can continue to work who understand. Okay. I don't understand how to. Um, I, I saw yeah, Jacob. I saw your message. I'll get back okay. to you in a second. Thank you though.
Okay, let's take another 30 seconds. I guess while, while people are finishing up, you can respond um, to the question in the text box also, to, but this time type to everybody. Okay, um, if anyone would like to answer the question also, um, now that you've talked about it in your private groups, you could also talk about it on the microphone or write it in, in the text box. Thank you, Melissa, really great answer. Maybe since that they seen there are so much, that there are so much like tension before, that uh, could be kind of scary living there because it could happen again. Really great answer, Adina, and really spot on, really. Um, Sarah, that's great. Anyone else would like to respond over uh, the microphone? We've been pretty good with the mic today. Yeah, Danny, please. Um. I think um, the British and the Arabs, they, they'd be annoyed with the um, Jews because the Jews got the land and that's the land they want. So this probably led them to start massacres and uprisings because they're angry at the Jews. Right. All right. So I, I do have to say, um, and I, I did forget to mention this, that once the British gave the land, or once in the UN it was voted that Israel would, would be a country, a Jewish state, um, the British left. So they were not really, they were definitely angry. It was um, many British people were killed in this fight, um, just like in other places that they, you know, that they colonized. Um, so they weren't that happy when they left. Um, Nicole. Right. Thank you, Nicole. That's a really great answer. Okay, so you guys had some really, Eli, I just want to say, we're angry at the Jews. Right. So, so the truth is, um, you're, you're, all, you're all basically right. You know, they left and, and I, you know, immediately, like I can't even say this, immediately went after, like the Jewish people declared their own state there was a, the war. There was the 1948 war, which is the independence war, where 1% of the Jewish population in Israel, now just think about that, were killed in this war, right? That's a lot of people today. If you visit the, um, the military cemetery in Israel called Har Herzl, which is the mountain of Herzl, um, they're, they're like, it's unbelievable just, just, People from all over the world came to Israel and Jews to, to fight for the country. And unfortunately, many, many people were killed. So many of you are right. It, they declared a state and it was happy. And like, just like you guys answered, people were so happy that it was a state. People were so happy that it, you know, that it was established. But immediately, immediately after, it turned into, unfortunately, a lot of death and a lot of sadness for what's happened. Um, what I'd like, what I'd like to show you, um, and you know, you guys will have to. This is a, it's a bit of a, it's a poll and it's a guess, um, but I want you to look at this, this uh, poll, and on on this link that I just posted, you know, take a couple minutes to to look at it, and I want you to see, you know, the different maps of Israel, how they've changed, how they've how they look, and try to guess which one you think is um which one you think is which year and it's interesting to see and it shows a lot about the aftermath of declaring a state of israel and a lot of what you said how that's true even until today so uh go on to that poll 
and um, Okay, it seems like seems like everyone voted. Um, so which one which one did everyone think is the current 2016 map? And why do you think so? Okay, um, so why don't we go to one which everyone seemed to think it was true. Which one, who th why did you think that D was the 1948? Why did you think D was 1948? Any responses? Don't all don't all you go at once. Okay, so just because we're 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 running a bit out of time, um, what's what's really important, and it's one of the things which I'm just gonna try to go through, not so quickly, but uh, relatively quickly, because um, we're we're running a bit out of time. I'm just gonna put this in presentation mode. Can you, are you, is everyone able to see this? I can't see you guys, but I hope you guys can see this. Okay. Oh, so, so this map, which you all voted as 1948, is Israel at the time of King David. Okay, I'll make it a little bigger so everybody could see. All right, Israel was this whole land, but also, if you look on the right side, and I'll just take, uh, I'm able to do this now that I've learned. Um, I can draw. Let's do this one. This part over there, that's Jordan. That's nowadays Jordan. We don't own that. Right? This was what was, um, you know, uh, considered, um, right? Uh, this, oh, I have to get, sorry, for some reason I can't. Exit this. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Um, right, this was uh, this belonged to this belonged to Jordan. So during the time of King David, the country was really, really big, or much bigger than it is now. Um, now, if we go to Israel, nineteen forty-eight. Uh, I gotta erase this. Sorry, everyone. I guess I won't use this because it's a little just difficult. If you look at nineteen forty-eight, this was right when the country was declared. Right, you'll see that Israel 
Israel is the yellow, if you see, is the Jewish state. And the red is what's considered Palestinian land. So you'll see they have a lot over here, right? It's sort of like half-half. That's what we see over here. We continue. This is Israel 1967. What happens? Anyone can see what happens between this one and this one? It's pretty obvious. Anyone, you can just say it out loud. Pardon? 1967. Thank you. Right, it's 1967. Which famous war happened in 1967? Anyone? Type it in or, or you could just say it. Anyone? Starts with a number. I'll say that. So it was the Six Day War where, oh, and someone I think chatted it in. The Six Day War, thank you, Danny, um, where, where Israel was fought against, and we'll look at this in a second, fought against many different Arab states surrounding it and won a lot of land. Look at that. That's Sinai, that's Egypt. They conquered that whole thing. They didn't, meaning they didn't go in to conquer more land. It just happened to be that they conquered. They conquered what we'll see, like this whole upper area called the Golan Heights, which is key to Israel's security. And they conquered a lot. They conquered Gaza, all these things. And then if we look at Israel today, this is what it looks like, right? We gave back, we gave back the Sinai. We gave back Gaza. Um, and, you know, this is really where it's difficult. So what we see that Israel declaring a state, even until today, it's not simple, right? This vote, which we saw over here, this vote declaring Israel as a country, took this, and, you know, we have all this. And even till today, even this past summer, we had a war in Gaza against uh, the Israel versus Hamas, right? Because these things are still happening. And it's really a difficult situation because, you know, it, it, you can look at it sort of just like Israel versus the Palestinians, but it's really like a much larger thing where, you know, when the British were here and they left and they left two people who think they deserve the land and they're fighting with each other, right? So it's similar, actually, if you look a lot of what's going on in other parts of Africa where, you know, they're, you know, British or Sp Spanish or Portuguese who are in the countries and then they left and then the people who were there started to fight. Um, um, just wanted to finish off with just two things. Um, this is what Israel looks like. Israel is this small little country in between Syria, Iraq, Jordan, Egypt, some pretty major um, Arab countries which have had wars, many wars against Israel. You can look at it also over here. So I guess um, what I'd like to finish off with in this class before I give you the, before I give you the, uh, the um, independent assignment is what do you think, what do you think are some of the daily struggles that Israel will go through because of where it's, where, where it's placed geographically and it's sized? Um, we were supposed to, we didn't have enough time for, you know, one of the activities. But what do you think is the difficulty that Israel has because of its size and its location? And you could just write your answers in here. Question is up there. Take the next minute to answer. Can we say it out loud? Yeah, you can say it out loud also, please. Okay, okay wait, hold on. Boys, quiet, please. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's Nicole's brothers. Um, how, like, it's easier for some countries to attack them because they're right next to it, and if, if there's a war, it's just way easier for them to invade. Great, right. And, like, they're surrounded by a lot of the countries, like, that don't like them, too. So right. That's right. Right. And 
great answers, really, really great answers. And um, it's one of the most amazing things about Israel, that it's been able to survive and thrive because of this. Um, Danny, thank you. Eli, you guys all had great answers. Um, we're just going to finish off um, with the independent exercise. We've done this once before. It's basically a spreadsheet with the alphabet. And basically, you know, we've done three classes on Israel right now. Anything that um, you've learned about Israel so far, just write your name and try to write as many um, one word answers you can about things that have to do with Israel. And you'll see it's pretty clear on the spreadsheet. Um, thank you guys very much. You guys were really, really great today. Um, spoke a lot on the mic and typed in a lot of answers and you made it really easy for me, um, as you always do, but even especially without Michal. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye everyone.